It's a good time, gal. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Good Time Gal. I am your host, Caitlin Palufo. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this week's episode, we've got Sean Donnelly. Holy hell, what a fun little sugar pie. Um, Sean is great. You've seen him on Colbert, Conan, Comedy Central. He's everywhere. Um, if you want to check him out online, he's at Shawnee Time on Instagram. And uh, he's got a Sirius XM show on Raw Dog Radio called Celebrate. Uh, it's very fun. I've been on it a few times. He's just, I mean, he's so sweet. You can't help but just celebrate the fact that you're hanging out with Sean Donald. You know what I mean? Uh, he's also got a brand new podcast out called Skylight. It's all about extraterrestrial shenanigans. I mean, I mean that's what they are. UFO shenanigans. I mean, I should write for these people. Anyway, um, please uh, rate, review, subscribe. You know, uh, subscribe to the podcast at Good Time Gal Pod on Instagram. Uh, and I'm at Caitlin Palufo on Instagram and Twitter. And um, like I said before, rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, or continue to live your life. But know that your silence kills me. Um, So think about that, huh? Anyway, I just want to say this was a really fun episode. We did record it outside, and so we had to take a brief break because there was a blower, a leaf blower going on in the background. So we had to just take a little, like, pause um so other than that uh it's a very fun episode um and please enjoy it and um we'll see you next week please live long and prosper huh i gotta find a catchphrase i'm so sorry bye-bye okay and now we're recording all right yeah i I don't do an intro no problem. No, 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 no. I just we're starting now. I am covered in kombucha. That was always the uh, that's always the hardest part to do the, the intro anyway. I mean, I do a separate one because then it's like, eh, right, you know? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, uh, and I can sit there and then make a fool of myself doing that one. I'm not very good at that either. I just kind of ramble on about my cat and then I <laughs> and then, then start the episode. yeah and then, like, and then Sean Donnelly. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all I do. But um, how are you, Sean Donnelly? I'm guest good. on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is very uh, regimented. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I'm good, Caitlin Palufo, host of the pod. <laughs> Thank I you. I am. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, better later lately because mm-hmm. I think now that things are loosening up, everybody's still wearing their masks. But mm-hmm. I have had the opportunity to do a little bit of stand up. We were just talking about it right before mm-hmm. we started recording, and uh, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. That's great. You know, Talking to a couple of ladies here and there, but no meetups Ooh, yet. You know? yeah. Chatting the gals up. Chatting the gals That's up. That's exciting. How are you chatting them up? There should be apps and stuff like that. Really? Like okay, texting. Okay, Cupid or? I was on Hinge and Bumble. Ooh, are you getting people talking to you on Bumble? I hear it doesn't work. I have talked to people on Bumble before, but mostly it's Hinge. Hinge. Yeah, and the Hinge go went from, I do a couple messages on the Hinge, and then I say, you want to just text, and then... I'll text for a while, and then hopefully something happens, like a meetup or something. That's exciting. But right now, it's such a weird time to date because the the, the good night kiss is, like, thrown out the window. Like oh, I just, yeah. There's some girl I was talking to for, f- like, a few days. I've been talking to her for a few days, and it's and she's really cool. But uh, I was like, oh, if you'd like to meet up, that'd be great. And she was like, yeah, as long as it's outside, that's fine. And I was like, yep, it'll be outside. Like, I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to bring you to a fucking exactly. indoor thing. Yeah, let's go to a movie theater and sit yeah, too yeah. close. Can we just go <laughs> to the, the worst ventilated area ever? Well, that also might take off some pressure. No goodbye kiss, so there's I no knocking ca- teeth, there's no slobber, no bad breath. Yeah, it kind of does, but it also, like, it puts it on that, like, the you want. I think you want that tension a little bit. Oh. So when that's out, of the, out the window, you're like kind of like just like, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens because yeah. I, uh, you know, there's not going to be a kiss and, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of more, it's like more friend vibe than anything else. You know? Well, that's probably for long term, that might be what you want, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably better because probably probably yeah. come off more nonchalant and cooler that way. Oh, for sure. If yeah. anything, I say that about you all the time. That I'm very nonchalant and cool. Very that's what much. most people say. Yeah. <laughs> when they think of Sean Donnelly, they're like, he does nothing. He's cool as a cucumber. <laughs> does not. Nothing gets a rise out of that guy. He's definitely not goofy at all. <laughs> he's totally put together. Yeah, and that, that hat he's wearing that says, oh, duck. <laughs> it, says, it says odd duck. Oh, it says odd duck. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I literally thought it said, oh, duck. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, I look like a guy that would be my catchphrase. Like, <laughs> something happens bad, I'm like, oh, duck. <laughs> 
Oh, Doc. <laughs> it's like I just have a pet duck that I just yeah. say that to. <laughs> well, you were we well, met up in your apartment. Yeah. Um, to pick you up, and you were quoting Seinfeld, and I thought you were talking to a cat. Yes, that's true. <laughs> what were you saying? I was saying something uh, to George. Oh, jo- it was the episode with Dan Cortez, where because you were like, you like, you said I'm down. So anytime I hear I'm down. The episode with Dan Cortez is when he, he Dan Cortez plays Elaine's boyfriend in one uh-huh. of the episodes. You know who Dan Cortez is? No. He's from MTV Sports. He was okay. like a, he was a celebrity for like five years back in like the nineties. Okay. And uh, and now he's probably doing something, but who knows? And yeah. <laughs> but he was like a big cares? deal on MTV for like a while. He would do like MTV Sports, which was like he would go like uh, like paragliding and jumping out planes and all that, right? Uh-huh. So he's on an episode of Seinfeld playing Elaine's boyfriend, but he's like a mimbo. They call him Mimbo, and he's like a man bimbo in the episode. <laughs> and he's like, and then George has like a non-sexual crush on him. Oh. So he'd be like, George, you down? He'd be like, we're going to go, go, we're gonna go uh, rock climbing. You down? And he'd be like, I am down. I am down. <laughs> but he just wants to hang out with, with Dan Cortez, George. Yeah. So he, uh, Dan Cortez asked Kramer to go, and t- Kramer's like, I'm down. I'm definitely down. And then George gets upset, and he goes, what's the matter, George? You down? You down? And then George goes, I am down. I am definitely down. <laughs> so that's what I was doing when okay. you came in. I, people who know Seinfeld will know what I'm down means. And I was literally like, oh, he's got a cat in his room. <laughs> Where's the kitty? I want to meet the kitty. Also, well, I don't know why you would assume I have a cat. I'm you not seem a, like you'd have a cat. Really? Oh, I think I'm more, I look more of a dog person. No. I do have a dog that does not live with me. He lives in Long Island. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Wrinkle, ri- oh. Rickles. Rickles. Yeah. <laughs> Rinkles. Rinkles. Well, he's an English bulldog, so he could be called Rinkles. That's very true. Yeah. And a lot of time I say it really fast if I'm telling people and they think I say Rinkles. <laughs> so I probably just should have named him Rinkles. <laughs> no, no. Rickles is way better. It's yeah. an homage. It's an homage. If you will. <laughs> a tribute to a comedy legend. Yeah. Um, okay. So this uh, podcast is about embarrassing drunk stories. And yes. one thing I know about you, after doing shows with you many a times, <laughs> um, you like to tie one off. You're a big uh, <laughs> drinking fella. Or at I least you were. I know you're taking I a break right now. I was. I was. I drank a lot. <laughs> I, I do love drinking. I just, you know what it is, is that I, um, we were talking about this, the whole weight thing. Like, my I drinking bloats me. I think most people mm-hmm. are bloats. And I got to the point where um, I... Uh, I had to like slow down. I'm getting older. I'm older, Caitlin. Yeah. You're a young spring chicken. I am an old Thank man. You. <laughs> so uh, I now have been watching. Like during the quarantine, when I drink, I drink White Claws. That's what it's gotten to. That's the point. Where I, I was a, a Guinness and Jameson guy, and now I drink White Claws. Mm-hmm. Uh, and don't get me wrong. Like I'm not. I wouldn't I'd probably get to a point where I drink beers again. But yeah, I uh, I'm definitely a big drinker. We've drank together before. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I enjoy it, and I had a. Um, the way I had to think of it is like a, a very fun career as a drinker. I have yeah. very and also like drinking. I don't know if you've mentioned this in the podcast before, but like drinking in comedy is like a thing. Like that's yeah. like it's definitely part of it. Like the mm-hmm. hanging out part. For the first ten years you're doing comedy, hanging out is as important as doing well on stage. Like yeah, it's that kind of thing. So yeah, I think that was like I was always. Don't get me wrong. I, I welcomed that being part of the gig. But yeah, uh, yeah. So I've done like. Um, a bunch of embarrassing stuff <laughs> while drunk. Do you want me to tell one of the stories? Oh, you're sure. Saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th- uh, <laughs> is that what you're saying th- to th- me? Is that what you're telling, trying to tell me in <laughs> so many words? <laughs> no. So I, the, any kind of fights that I've gotten into have always been dr- drunk-related fights. That blows my mind. You are like a cuddle bear. I am a cuddle bear. <laughs> and I'm also way more relaxed now, whatever it is. But I always, like, I, if, and I, I never really start the fights. But I will... Um, You'll finish them. But I'll finish them. <laughs> <laughs> but I will always, like, I don't instigate anything, but mm-hmm. if I get messed with while I'm drunk, I'll be enough of a pain in the ass that the fight will happen. Like, that kind of thing, where I'm like, <laughs> like, I'll purposely get take it to the next level, where just, you know, start making fun of them, or whatever happens. Yeah. So, but this story was at a place called Cabin, and I don't think you started yet when Cabin was a thing, I've did done you? one show at Cabin. One show That's at Cabin. It. Okay, yeah. so that was probably right when you first started. Yeah. Right when I first started, it was a, and it closed like a month later. This place was talk about when you talk about one of the legendary shows in the city. There was uh, Cabin was it because Cabin was like this place where there used to be more regimented groups of comedians in the city. Now it's more a lot of people just know each other. It's kind of it used to be Alt and Club was the thing. Yeah. Now that's not the case no. because Alt kind of became the regular comedy you'd see on TV. Yeah. All the old guys were getting the TV shows. So then what happens is you had this like amalgam where people were just like, that was going into the clubs because that's what people were watching on TV. Yeah. 
not always. You still have some tried and true club guys that are very observational, whatever it is. But the clubs definitely opened their doors to like all comedy when they became more of the norm. Not to yeah. like, give a fucking history lesson. No, or I like it. No, yeah. give this TED talk. So <laughs> anyway, uh, c- Cabin was a perfect example. Of door when it was rent-a-vented, it was this place every Thursday, nine o'clock, nine thirty. This dive bar show that had two-dollar PBRs that all these broke comics could go and meet up at, mm-hmm. and everybody from all the different scenes kind of would come here and hang out. Yeah. And it was kind of cool because you would go and see somebody you haven't seen in six months, and they'd be like, "Hey, do my show," and I'd be like, "You you book a show, you'd hang out, you get loaded." So to give you an idea of this place, I got kicked out of there for two months for fighting, and this is the story behind. Oh my goodness! Behind that. Who could kick you out of anything? <laughs> I know that's how I feel. How, how could you not love this guy? So anyway, so what happens is I'm drunk one night. My friend Sean, who's not a comic, was with me, uh, and we're at we show up at cabin, mm-hmm. uh, and I I'm, I have to go to the bathroom really bad. So me and him get online for the bathroom. There's this girl in front of us, and Cabin had the, was notorious for these really, really, really bad, crappy dive bar bathrooms. Uh-huh. And the the woman's room is occupied, and so is the guy's at this point. Then the guy comes out of the guy's room, and trying to be nice because I'm a cuddle bug, just like you said. You are. I tell the woman, I go, "Would you like to use the guy's room? I'll I'll wait. You know, use the guy's room." And she goes, "No, I'm okay." But I was so intoxicated at that <laughs> point that I must have forgotten that I asked her. So once again, I said, "I w- I just didn't go anywhere," and I kind of did a reset, and I was like. <laughs> You want to use the guy's room? Go ahead, use the guy's room. Use the guy's room. And she goes, no, I don't want to. And I was like, okay. Once again, I kind of didn't, kind of dozed off, and I did not remember what was going on. And so for a third time, I go, you want to use the guy's room? Go ahead, use the guy's room. It's like this drunk idiot oh talking. My. Use the guy's room. And she goes, no, go ahead, go, go. And she got very snippy. So the walls were so thin, the door was so thin in Cabin's bathroom that while I'm taking a pee, a, a, a piss, if you will, in the, <laughs> in the vernacular of the dive bar, <laughs> I am standing there using the bathroom, and, uh, and outside I hear my friend, also named Sean, talk to the girl, and he goes, sorry, my friend, he's just really drunk right now. Like, he was, like, trying to apologize for me, which I was like, I didn't do anything wrong, yeah. really. Yeah, And then, so I hear her, she goes, your friend's an asshole, like, starts, cr- like, she must have been drunk, too, the more I think about it, yeah. right? So she's like she's cursing me out, and I'm like, "What the hell? What are you doing?" Uh, and I'm like, "I'm like hearing her like fuck him. He's an asshole. He was so rude." Blah, blah. And she's like going off about it, and like screaming at my friend Sean about what I was doing. And I wasn't mean or anything. I was no. just like, "Do you want to use the bathroom?" Yeah. So I hear this, and I'm like, "What the hell?" So I get out, and I go, "I have a, a, like an empty bottle in my hand, right?" <laughs> and I go, "I go, what the hell?" I go, "Why are you calling me? I heard you. Why'd you call me an asshole?" I and she goes, "Fuck you!" And she like got in my face, like like got all crazy mm-hmm. in my face. So, I was like, I don't need this. So I, I, I my, my, my hand with the bottle, I dismissively go, whatever, and I kind of do like a hand wave with my, uh-huh. now, what I didn't realize was, the bottle wasn't empty. The bottle was <laughs> half full of beer, no. and I poured beer all over this girl by accident. And I swear to God it was by accident. I did not have malice intent when I was doing this. Yeah. So I full on... Just like, just like I was, you know, like I was blessing, like I was a p- <laughs> the Pope blessing her. I was a priest in a church, just blessing her, and I just it was it went all over. It was actually pretty bad, like it went all over her. But I have, I didn't even realize that. All I heard was her still yelling. So I thought she was yelling about us before. Like I thought she was just still yeah. arguing with me. So I start walking out of the bar. I'm like, whatever, fuck this, let's go, whatever. And I start walking to the bar, and out of nowhere, I get pushed on the ground, put from behind, full on, <laughs> boom, right to the ground, and I get up. And I go, <laughs> for, I see this guy standing there, and I almost don't even know what's going on. And I go, all right, and this is how you know how drunk I was. I go, all right, what's going to happen now? That's what, I, that's, what I, that's what I said. So it turns out, I, then I don't know where I see that the girl's behind us. So it's the girl's boyfriend. Yeah. And he goes, what the fuck? You, you know, and I don't even, you know, you ha- I'm half out of it, so whatever yeah. it is. So I did that thing where um, we got into it. Like, we started fighting. I, I jumped into it. We both jumped into it, and it got broken up. And there's this thing with fights that you can do when you're a guy where if already people have broken up the fight, the logic is, hey, if I do this again and I want to look tougher because I'm starting the fight again, they'll break it up again. They're probably going to break it up again. So that's what I did. I jumped. I go, I jump back into it. And then I just get pulled away, and I get, uh, I get kicked out of the bar with my friend, and we're outside. And I was so drunk, I made my friend wait for a half hour outside the bar for this guy. He never came out. And then while I was being kicked out, Michelle, the bartender, she was like, you're kicked out for two months out of the bar. (laughs) So that's an embarrassing story. From when I was like probably, I was probably in my 30s. That's how bad it was. (laughs) Because I started comedy at 28. So it wasn't that far after I started comedy. I was probably like early 30s. Like I drank. I drank a lot up until an age that was n- is not acceptable for me. <laughs> and comedy was always the thing. And like, and then I, it was always fight stories that would happen. Like, 
there was this one New Year's Eve where I was in, I used to live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and <laughs> me and my friends, we went to this place called Harefield Road. It's a great bar that's in Brooklyn, and it's just kind of bar. Uh, always the good bar is the bar that you can, like, you're going to get loaded at. Like, yeah. the Patty, Patty McGuire's in the city is my oh, favorite bar. it's so Because fun. that's a place that you walk in and you're like, I am going to be drunk by the time, even when you don't even mean to. Like, yeah. you, you almost have to catch yourself yeah. having, because they're the good, they're the old school good bartenders that, like, they start you over the shots because they know you're going to drink more if you drink a shot. So, uh, but it's for drinkers. Like, you mm-hmm. go to those bars for drinkers. So, yeah. Harefield Robe is like that, okay? And it's New Year's Eve. Probably, I'm probably 31. Maybe I'm, no, you know what? No, I'm probably, like, in my 20s at this point. I'm probably 27. Maybe it was before I did stand up. Maybe it was. Anyway, I'm with my buddies from that I'm from, I know from Long Island. Uh huh. And we're all hanging out and we're getting drunk. And like uh, three different fights almost happened that night. And then at one point there was this giant like brick layer off the boat Irish dude in this bar. Uh huh. And we're all hanging out and it's kind of a melee of like ha- like uh, stupid shits happening, arguments are happening, it's just stupid drunk, yeah. drunk whatever bullshit, right? And then out of nowhere, I didn't even see what happened, but out of nowhere. My friend Ken is being strangled by this giant Irish dude. He has his hand. <laughs> oh no! He has his hand around my friend's neck. That's like so a, scary. It's so scary. So me, being drunk muscles and <laughs> beer muscles, I was like, "What the fuck?" And the guy's gigantic. But me, not even thinking twice, I just go up behind the guy and I punch him in the back of the head. <laughs> now, this guy was gigantic. It was nothing for this guy to get punched. And I'm not a tiny person. I'm 200 something pounds. Like, <laughs> I, I'm also not a I'm not a I'm not a weightlifter. I'm not a strong person. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like normally, me punching somebody would do something. Maybe yeah. this guy was probably six foot five. He was probably 250 pounds. He was gigantic, and he had that like. I do construction for a living. Look, yeah. so I punch him, and then he does. The, he turns around and does the same thing to me. He grabs me by the neck and then lifts me up, and I'm freaking out, and I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> and they grab the, everybody from the bar grabs him, and they kick him out of the bar. And uh, this guy is just pacing like a lion back and <laughs> forth outside the bar, waiting for me. And at that point, I've sobered up because of how you know, near death experience will do that. Yeah, and no, being choked out and lifted. <laughs> exactly. So at one point, I go, in like my best like Peter Brady voice, I'm like, should I go apologize? <laughs> And they're like, no. They're like, no, do not go outside. Whatever you do, do not go out. Like, they were serious. They're like, do not. He will kill you. Do not go outside. Yeah. They go, but don't worry. He starts fights in here all the time. And I'm like, well. well why I'm, is he allowed back in? Because they just do that in bars. And like okay. they, you know, the guy, they know, he knows a guy. He probably knew the yeah. owner or something. And anyway, I found out, after all was said and done, later on that night, I found out the reason that he was choking my friend was because my friend Ken, without even saying a word, just went up to him and slapped him in the face. <laughs> So that's how much of a mess that night was. Like that's usually my stories when it comes to being drunk. Like, it ends in a stupid fight. Uh, one time I hurt my hand almost uh, from, from punching another guy in the back of the yeah, head. Yeah, because no, not I punched a guy on top of the head, which is like the hardest part of your body by accident. Why did you punch a guy on the top of the head? So this is kind of funny. And how does that even happen? Was he short? Was he a tiny man? He was probably a little bit shorter than me, but he came charging at me. So I punched <laughs> him right where I punched whatever I found, and I, I I think I broke my hand and I never got it fixed. It was like that kind of thing. So, what happens is, uh, what happens is, uh, Matt, there used to be a bar. There still is a bar. Oh, actually, no, I don't think it's still there. Max Fish. Have you ever heard of Max Fish? No. It was like a hipster bar back in the early 2000s. Okay. So, when I was in my, uh, my when I was in my, uh, is that cool? I don't, uh, I, oh, yeah. The yeah. guy weed whacking and the other guy watering the lawn. <laughs> it's never this noisy over here. I'm like, I'm like, Caitlin, I brought you to a nice, quiet uh. spot. <laughs> And they're doing all the all the yard work. It's Saturday, guys. Go <laughs> home. Uh, anyway, so uh, I this place Max Fish. Uh, I'm probably in my early twenties, uh, and I can't even imagine you in your early twenties. What was that like? A l- probably a lot of drinking going on. I and for part of it, I skateboarded. I was a skateboarder. Ooh, Can you believe it? I was skateboarding not, boy. I was not good at it, but I was a skateboarder. And you were living in Williamsburg again. I was living at that point, it might have been before I moved out, it was probably right at my, my, not to get morbid, my dad died a long time ago. I think it was after my dad, right after my dad died, uh-huh. and it was, uh, what you call it, should we pause? I yeah. hope he comes closer. <laughs> no, it's fine. All right, anyway, so far enough we can away. move if you want. You want no, 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 I Sorry, think I don't, mean to, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> the momentum of the podcast. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. tell me about your dead dad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, yeah. So it, uh, that's all. Oh, sorry. Oh, now hand. we're touching. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this I, is really getting into this. Is really, this is really getting. This is weird <laughs> podcast. Um, so what happened was I'm at this bar, Max Fish, and uh, I'm probably like 23 years old. Uh huh. And there's a guy. Uh, there's a moment where I have to go use the bathroom. So I'm all, I'm already really loaded. So I go, I start walking back to the bathroom, and I have to, like, squeeze by this guy by the pool table. Uh-huh. And I squeeze by. I probably even said, excuse me. <laughs> and I was like, you know, excuse me, whatever it is. And I walk by this guy, and he looks me in the eyes, and he goes, when you come back, you go the other way. That's what he said to me. <laughs> oh, no. So I just kind of, I'm like, oh, that's an invitation that. for me just to be an asshole. Oh, so cool. I just laughed you're in his come face. Back and you're going to tickle him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I came back the same way that he was, and I just started purposely bumping into him as I was going. So I just thrusted my hips towards him the whole time I'm going walking by him through this like narrow spot by the pool table. So he freaks out. We get in each other's faces. Like we we like we're both really loaded with with our groups of friends. Yeah. It never comes to anything. Nothing ever really happens, but I get to the point where um I get to the point where I'm like, all right, whatever. And then I, I go back to my group of friends, right? So I kind of forget it's happened. <laughs> and uh, the end of the night comes. Everybody's kind of moseying out of the bar or whatever yeah. it is. And I, are you, do you want to stop for a second? Let's stop. <laughs> Finish the story. I'm, I'm Finish so the story. Okay, okay. So I'm moseying out of the bar. And people are in a line. The bar's so crowded. People are in a line. Yeah. And they're wa- well, I'm walking out of the bar, and I don't realize what's going on. I'm kind of half out of it. <laughs> And I get outside, and I look up, and it's the guy, and I go, you! And I just went to punch the <laughs> dude. And I kind of missed, and he ran towards me, like, head down, like he was going to tackle me. And I punched the top of his head, <laughs> and immediately I was like, I broke my hand. <laughs> but I still was like, I'm going to fight this guy. Yeah. And then my friend started to get involved, and I was trying to do the thing where you're like, no, don't get involved, don't get involved. And then my one friend grabs the guy, and he's like, listen, he's like, take off, we're, we're going to kick your ass. And, and I'm like, no, 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 let me, let me find him. Let me find him. <laughs> loaded, loaded. And the guy runs off with his friends, and they get out of there, and that's what happened. <laughs> but it was such an idiot fight. It was such an idiot fight. You know, that's it was so, so stupid. funny. Yeah. All right, let's move down. Let's move down to... Uh, all right. And we're back, baby. So, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about your the, the technical difficulty there. But, um, <laughs> it's okay. I like a weed whacker in the background. Yeah, it's always good for a podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially that, when they're coming closer. Yeah, they're closer <laughs> and closer. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're going to attack us with the weed whacker. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, that's anything involving me with drinking is... Yeah. Is... Um, well, I got to... Is, is fighting, fight stories. It's so funny because, like... That's, I feel like, the opposite of what you are now. You're just so welcoming and loving. And oh, yeah. But even when, even when it comes to the fights, like, it's never, first of all, it was always few and far between. Mm-hmm. I am a happy drunk. Hello, buddy. Mm-hmm. Who's this? <laughs> hello, baby. How are you? Hi. It's how's okay. How's it going? Ooh, <laughs> hello. Oh, my gosh. What a cute little baby. <laughs> um, we should do podcasts in the park all the time. I know, just because there's so much stuff I going on. I love the dog. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like, I'm not, yeah, I am the nice guy, but like, <laughs> but it's always like circumstances that get to that point. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so, and, or, and it's me not being able to like, there was another time where I was at, uh, this, another bar, I forget which one it was. And I, this guy, I was on the line for the bathroom and this guy made fun of my shirt. I had like hibiscus flowers on my shirt. It was like <laughs> one of those old Navy design shirts from Aww. like back in the, probably the nineties, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing, early 2000s. Uh-huh. And I'm online and I go, Hey, I'm also drunk again. <laughs> And I go, I go tell the guy, I have him on the shoulder, I go, what'd you say about my shirt? And he goes, don't worry about it. I go, you just made fun of my shirt. Make, make it fun of it to me if you're going to say it. Yeah. Make fun of it. Say, tell me. And he goes, no. And I go, why not? Why won't you tell me what, what you said? <laughs> I'm like, why are you being a, a, a pussy about it? Just tell me what you said. About it. I'm like, I'm not going to fight you. I just want you to tell me. I was, you know, I just tell me. I want yeah. you to be a man and tell me about your shirt. That's what I go, I will not touch you. I go, I'll keep my hands behind my back. I will not fight you. And I got so adamant about it that his girlfriend got involved. Like, I'll <laughs> never forget it. His girlfriend got in front of him, he's like, listen, dude, he's not going to tell you, just leave. And I was like, no, I will not leave until he tells me. <laughs> and I, I don't know why you're involved right now. So it was like this whole big melee. But that didn't end in a fight, but it was still like, I get very adamant when I get drunk. Like, yeah. if I, like I, I got one, one thing about a guy who, a guy, and you'll like this because it, 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 there was a female comic there, and the guy was like trying to hit on her, I think, by like nagging her about female comedy. Oh, and I think about like <laughs> the level of what she was at, like the level of comedy that she was at, and I and I got in the guy's face over it. Like mm-hmm. a, a more, the most I've gotten somebody's face 
in a long time. Yeah. And they saw it and they were like, "Easy, Grandpa Donnelly." Not Grandpa Donnelly. They're like Uncle Donnelly. Like yeah. you know, like whatever it is. But I, some guy, I got really um, pissed off at, and I was ready. To, I actually was ready to like something really stuck in my craw about this guy. Where I, I forget what he said. It was like something like, "Oh yeah, but you're not." Uh, uh, you're not a professional, or you don't really do it, or whatever it is. Oh I'm my like, god! I'm like, I'm like, she does it. She does. It. I'm like, what do you like? I just remember getting really. I was really loaded, and <laughs> I got to the point where I did that thing where we didn't fight, but I did the thing where I chucked a stool. You chuck a stool, like Adam, like onto the side to seem tougher. Yeah. So when he started backing up, I threw a stool to the side and kept going further. <laughs> oh, to to on the prowl. Yeah, on the just prowl. Really yeah. making your yeah. approach. I'm a real lion. I'm a lion. <laughs> yeah. when it comes to you're not not just duck. You're a lion. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not duck. I'm a lion. Oh my god. So that's what I get like. But mostly, I'm a happy, silly drunk. I want to know who those two comics are. It was, it was, it was Aaliyah Janine. Oh, I don't know. Do you who know Aaliyah Janine? And I think she's. I don't know. Maybe she's not pro professional, professional, but she does shows. Yeah. And he said something to her, and it was another comic with her that was. He was only saying it because he was like, tr he was tr hoping that she would. It'd be like that negging thing from that yeah. stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, you're only doing that because you. I'm like, you wouldn't say. I think I even said, I go, say that to me. You wouldn't say that to me. Mm -hmm. Say it to me. Like I got real tough guy. Was for a she second. like swoon? No, I don't think she swooned. I think she was just like. Oh, appreciative of me doing it. But yeah. she wasn't like, oh, Donnelly, you're so hot now for doing it. <laughs> it's not happening. You're such a liar. It doesn't happen. You look like a cartoon bear that doesn't fucking happen to you. Nobody's like, you can stand up for women and they're just like, thanks, Dad. Like, it's not, <laughs> like when you look, you look like everybody's uncle. Nobody's like, how hot was that? They're like, that's my uncle protecting me. <laughs> yeah. so that's what I mean. Like, they were like, you were like an uncle. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's yeah. even hotter than that. You know, like <laughs> now, you grew up on Long Island? Yeah. So. That's it's almost a rite of passage that you have to fight in bars. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I grew up. Where, I grew up on the border of uh, Queens and, and Nassau County in Long Island. Okay. And were you the only child? No, I was middle. Middle. So I have an older sister and a younger sister. No brothers. Aww. I'm the middle child too. Are you really? Yes. Do you think there's a thing to that? Do you think there's like a? Uh, Maybe. Well, there's always a keep the peace. Yeah, yeah, I think there's that. There's uh, that. Like everybody's happy, you know. My the weird thing is my if I had to, you know, I think my. I I thought that I always thought my sisters were preferentially treated. I think they think I was preferentially because when I was a kid, I had a learning disability. So I think they think that I was like babied because I had a learning oh, disability. Oh, what was Which your I don't learning think was disability? True. I had ADD and then I had uh, whatever co whatever cognitive thing. But it was like, to be honest, it was. I always wonder about that because I always wonder because everything happened normally. I would mm -hmm. I would like, I had extra time on tests. I wouldn't take it. It was like yeah. that kind of thing. But it was more of like they they diagnosed ADD and I yeah. I would take Ritalin and stuff for it. Yeah. So um, I always wonder what would have happened if I wasn't told that I had yeah. that. And if I just would have gone through things normally and then, I don't know. Like, I wonder yeah. if I would have. And also, I'm not blaming it on that, but I'm like, I wonder if I would have been more driven mm -hmm. if I was like, well, I'm an idiot. Like, I'm yeah. not, I'm, it doesn't mean you're an idiot. I'm not trying to say that. No, no, no. But, but I'm but just I saying, like. Making an excuse for yourself. Exactly. Or why you didn't succeed, or whatever, Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Why yeah. I'm not a, a brain surgeon. <laughs> yeah. But well, I, I think you found that. your own brain surgery. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's fighting in bars. That's what <laughs> it's it is. Fighting in bars. My, if I can have a job, um, a passive aggressively fighting in bars. <laughs> yeah. When you make fun of my shirt, I, that's my that's me being I a brain surgeon. I love it. I love that you were an old navy dude too. Did you have puka shells on? No, no, I was not. Was that old navy? That was more like wasn't that Pac Sun more? Oh, a little like bit. Old navy. Yeah, yeah. Old, the old navy probably had them after Pac Sun got on, like the cheaper versions yes. of them. Yeah, the plastic version. I used version. to be. Yeah, I would wear. A bunch of I would wear stuff that said Old Navy on it sometimes, <laughs> and then I would wear oh, and then very long time ago, like a good amount of time ago, I swore off Old Navy jeans because they just became like a mishmash of denim after a while. There was like those they were just not they were I don't know what what models they were using to shape <laughs> these things. You ever wear Old Navy jeans back in the day? They were it was like a potato sack with uh, yeah. made of denim. Like it was oh, not yeah. you couldn't it was like awful awful jeans. But I when they were normal because I don't know if you remember this. The gap, the gap, the company used to be way higher quality yes. stuff. Yes. And then there was a while where it was like Old Navy. Old Navy was really good when it came out, like, like quality wise of the yeah. clothes. And then it went really chintzy. Mm -hmm. And then the gap now is also chintzy. If you the clothes aren't as nice as they were, and now they do this trick where they're like, we're giving you forty percent off all the time. And the yeah. gap, they go forty percent sale. There's never not been a forty percent sale yeah. at the gap. And it's like, no, you just lowered your prices. This is your way of tricking people. Yes. And then if you go to the Gap outlet, have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. You think it's like, oh, this is Gap clothes. It's not. It's no. like 
Old Navy, but for extra, extra large. That's basically yeah, what it exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. I always loved going to Old Navy only because, at, like, everywhere else I'm, like, a size 10, and at Old Navy I'm a size 6. Oh, so that's great. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> who's a size 6? Ooh, who's a model? Vogue, here I come. I know. It really felt great. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, so I grew up there, and then, yeah. You know, I want to know, uh, did you start drinking in high school? I didn't start drinking until, like, the... The end of the end end of high school. What like were you like in my high school? senior weekend thing at the end of the yeah. high school? I think okay. So you know how like I was like the I wouldn't say I was like I think I was funny. Yeah. But I think more so than now I was oh I was trying to be funny more than I am doing. I think we I think there's a thing that happens. I don't know if you have the same thing. Okay. Some guys, what happens is uh, you go into comedy or some comics. You go into comedy, then you you still stay the always on guy. Yes. But don't you think like do you think your your pre comedy persona was it a little it was a little bit hungrier to get laughs in normal day everyday mm-hmm. life right Yeah. That's how I feel about myself. I think I was the guy that like but don't get me wrong like I was funny with my friends. Yeah. But. And I was normal. I wasn't like where I was annoying, but I probably could get annoying where I was like being silly for the sake of being silly. Mm -hmm. And I think with comedy and you're in the world, you're in a world with a bunch of funny people, you have to learn how to be way funnier and you can't be always on because that can get really annoying. It's funny, like before I did comedy, I didn't even think about doing comedy. It wasn't even like in my brainwave until like two years before um, I started doing it. But before that, I was like... Um, I just like went through a breakup and I was like, I think I could do that. I could do that. Yeah, and then yeah. I tried it and I could. Yeah. Um, I didn't have, I don't have stage fright. Like that's not, I'm, and I've always been silly. You've never had it. Not really. I mean, I get nervous before shows, but I don't think it's any more than like, um, like I don't, I don't worry about, uh, getting up there and talking in front of people. I worry that's about great. doing well. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. the material I'm worried about, not the yeah. actual being in front of people. Well, Patrice O'Neill said you should always be you should always be anxious before a show. Oh, not yeah. nervous, but anxious. Yeah. Then I think I think it's true. I think because if you don't, then you don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. But um, when I before I did comedy, I was always trying to make people laugh, being silly, being the class clown. Yeah. And then it's like once you start doing comedy, that void is filled. And so you yes. can turn it off and yes. you can be like, oh, I'm a normal person now. Yes. I, I, like during this quarantine, I was like, am I actually an introvert? Am I? Yeah. <laughs> is that what I am? And yeah. then I just perf- get it. But it's really just the outlet is fulfilled. And then you come home and you're like, oh, I can sit in silence and be fine. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree. Yeah. And I think, uh, I, uh, and also it gets to the point where like, not that you don't want comedy around you, but you want good comedy around yes. you. you want, and also some people don't, that doesn't happen to some people. Mm-hmm. Some people are still like, I need to, it's ongoing, ongoing, yeah. ongoing, ongoing. Mm-hmm. But I, I was the same exact way where I think I was like, ah, I know, and people don't realize how comics are when they're not doing comedy. Yeah. Now, comics are funny to comics, mm-hmm. and some and then you have some that are just uh, always on, and they're, they're quick enough that they're going to the bank and they're funny. And yeah. I, I'm sure I've been funny at the bank at times. <laughs> yeah. But I think, like, I've had people tell me, like, like you don't seem like a comic. And I'm like, yeah, but that's why. Because yeah. I, I do it, and I'm not, I'm, I don't have to impress you right now because I don't give a shit. Like, you have this weird, it's this weird insecurity and confidence that comes along with, with te- mm-hmm. for me, I think I'm more of a confident person now from doing, I'm, yeah. 14 years into stand up. So yeah. like I'm that has helped me in everyday life be a more confident person. Yeah. And that's where the less the less like trying too hard thing mm-hmm. came from. Absolutely. So in high school you were trying hard were you skateboarding then too? I was skateboarding in high school. I skateboarded from like 14 to probably like 20 years old. Were you good? No, I was <laughs> not good. I was I always use the analogy I bring it on to comedy terms and I go, "You know those comics that aren't that great but they hang out, they do it for the social reason?" Uh-huh. That's why I did stand up. I mean, that's why I did skateboarding. <laughs> oh, no! I mean, stand-up, too, yeah. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> and things aren't going so great. Let's well, you blossomed. No, I blossomed, huh? yes. No, like, that's the thing. Like, I can confidently say I'm a good stand-up. I was a terrible skateboarder. Really? <laughs> I was just... I was a wimp with it. Like, I didn't... I, I, that's what I mean. Like, the confidence level of... If I... Maybe me now, as a, as a 14-year-old, would have tried things, g- gone harder than yeah. I did. Back then, I was, like, afraid of getting hurt, probably. Or, yeah. Like, I was just, like... But, uh... But I wanted to hang out with my friends, and my friends were doing it. And yeah. And, and 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 back then, it's like it didn't matter how good you were. Like yeah. people made fun of people for sucking. I guess I'm sure I got made fun of for sucking at some point. <laughs> now being an adult, I'm sure they said like I get made fun of now because like I should do like a few tricks, and one of them was heel. I would try heel flips all the time, and even now my friend Tim will call me up and be like heel flips because that's the only <laughs> thing I could do. Like heel flips. Because he was like. 
you know, that, that he, he, you know, yeah. like that's that's goofing on you in skateboarding. Yeah. Oh, here's the one fucking stupid <laughs> trick you did. <laughs> uh, well, it seems impressive to me. Yeah. I can't do a heel anything. Yeah, right. Huh? right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do a heel somersault. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. But but that's what I mean. Like so, and also like, comedy is more judgmental than skateboarding. Like my friends, I could have quit skateboarding and I still would have hung out with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think what happens in comedy, besides maybe a handful of people. I, t- I, I, well, now, especially with quarantine, that kind of happened to everybody, but you stop comedy tomorrow, there's there's 500 people you're never seeing again in your yeah. life. You know, it's like mm-hmm. a really weird phenomenon. It's very strange. And um, I uh, I realized how much my life is completely centered around it. And I was like, oh, no, I, it, I need it, a hobby. You, uh, you, you, me too. Yeah. You, 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 uh, mm. you. <laughs> They're back. Is that them? That's not the same guy. No, no, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just like, all right, we're setting up shop right here, and we're going to weed whack this tree to the ground. <laughs> I, I thought I really had a great spot for us. Was <laughs> it was lovely. Yeah. Um, I think that's what happens, too, in comedy. And and we can bring it back to drinking, because the hanging out part, like I said, is mm. so paramount when you're first starting out in comedy. It's yeah. so so important that you kind of ease into the fact that, like, your social circle becomes all comics. Yeah. And only in the past, I'd say five years, have I kind of shooken out of that and been like, I have to reconnect to people that I hung yeah. out with mm-hmm. prior. Like, I have to. Because it was like, everybody's life goes a different way. You know, like, mm-hmm. a lot of people you know from from back in the day, like, you know, people get married and have kids and stuff yeah. and stay where you're from. Like, for me, it's Long Island. And, yeah. And you, then, but comics have the same experience. So you just gravitate towards each other yeah. and hang out and get loaded and it's fun. And then you sta- you have the same outlook on life after a while. You yeah. Get, you get that... I don't want to call it jaded, but you get you do get there's a little bit of cynicism in there, mm-hmm. and you get and then like that might some of those some of your friends might not relate to you know what I'm saying yeah. like they might be like Jesus what happened to you kind of thing you know like yeah. what happened <laughs> like uh, comedy did yeah. yeah so um, so you were a try hard in high school I was a like I like a laugh at me kind of thing and I, like I wanted to get la- like I wanted to yeah but you know I wanted to make jokes and you know so the first time you drank was the your senior weekend I think it was like. The senior last, the last, the end of like senior year. Uh huh. The first time I drank was like my friends had Rolling Rocks, which is like you know, <laughs> it's like it's like teenager beer. Don't uh, diss Rolling Rock. <laughs> it's one of the only beers in a green can that is still enjoyable. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and um, so I think that's when I like started being like, oh, I'll have some beers. And then and then I went to way to Manhattan College for a year, and a lot of my friends didn't drink that much, so I didn't really drink. And then after I left Manhattan College, weirdly like. And I was, when I was like 19, 20, I started drinking way more. Like yeah. I, was, I was living in Long Island. I was like going to a community college. I was going to this bar, Croxley's, that was near my house, hanging out with my oh, friends. Oh, what a great name. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and BK Sweeney's and oh Croxley's. Oh, my yeah, yeah. God. You sound like the mayor of BK <laughs> Sweeney's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably was without even yeah. realizing it. I was just drunk, you know. Uh, anyway, and... Uh, so that was when I really picked it up, and that's when I went from probably, you know, I don't know, 100, 160 pounds to about two, then you get to 210, 220, 230, like creep up, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, were you dating at the time? Was I dating back then? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, around that time, up until like, that's, I'd say the early 20s, like 24, 23, 20, I was dating this girl I was in like love with. This girl that, to this day, I'll be like, oh yeah, I was, I'll, I'll never not probably like have feelings for this girl. Aww. Yeah, it's kind of sad. So that was like, a really happy <laughs> yeah. time. It was a happy time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like one of those. You know, one of those. Like one of those yeah, kind of things. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, I was definitely dating and hanging mm-hmm. out and making out and doing all. Where is she that. now? She's she was married a couple times and then she has kids and she's now she's dating some dude. I think they're having a kid. So yeah. Oh, you, so there's no space for you to just run back? It's, yeah, no, no, there's not. It's one of those things no. that isn't going to happen. We went, we were off and on for like two years, but I, when I look, I'm saying when I look back on my life, you know what I'm saying? When yeah. I look back on my life, like I'm, like, I'm Citizen <laughs> yeah. Kane all of a sudden. Well, it's half over. Like, She's so. my rosebud. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, <laughs> um, no, like, I'm not that old, but I'm older. <laughs> and thinking about that, that time in my life, that's one of the reasons that, I had such a great time in that period because I was like head over heels in love, head yeah. over heels in love. Of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. So what made you make the leap to comedy? I'll tell you, it's a really unromantic story, a un, um, magical story. Okay. Non-magical story. Uh, okay, so I always wanted to do it, mm-hmm. and, and I didn't start till I was 28. 
Yeah. Um, and most people start before that. That's why I'm mentioning that. Mm -hmm. uh, some don't, but most do. And I was in. I remember I was in Long Island. My sister. My sister used to work for Comedy Central. She did events for them a long time oh, ago wow. before I started. And she even she knew I wanted to start. So one one Christmas she bought me a notebook to like write jokes in and stuff Aww, like that. It was really that's sweet. So sweet. And I even went to a, an open mic in Long Island and I walked in and everybody was writing in their books. And this was probably like four years before I tried. And I walked right out. Oh no. So I kind of did this thing where uh, okay, so I was like, I'm not gonna do it because I don't have enough guts to do it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna produce shows. That's what I was like. I'll produce a show because I didn't think. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think like oh it would make me do it. I was just like I'll just be around it. I'll be the I'll, yeah. I'll produce this and I'll have a free uh, whatever. And I had a free show at this place Croxley's that not in Long Island, the one they had in the city, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I that got shut down because of noise complaints. So then I went to a place called Jack Dempsey's in Midtown because to help out, you know Joe DeVito, the comic. Oh yeah. He asked me and my friend Blaine. He goes, "Do you guys want to help me with my show?" So Blaine would hand out flyers for the show in Midtown uh -huh. and get a spot. I would hand out flyers and get nothing because <laughs> I didn't do comedy. But I just wanted to be around it. I was like yeah. that. So this is the story. So one day, I was in Jack Dempsey's, uh, and was, uh, Joe DeVito, uh, who to this day is like one of the reasons I do stand-up, he said, he goes, hey, there's a open mic around the corner at a place called Maui Taco, which was a taco place on Fifth Avenue and like 33rd Street. Uh -huh. And it was awful. It was, just, it was like McDonald's but for tacos. It was like that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. It was neon lighting, right? It was in the basement. Of you, when you did the open mic, you stood on two milk crates side to side with oh a blanket God. over it. Uh -huh. There was a fake VW bus coming out of the wall. <laughs> Your audience was other open micers, which is mm. normal, and then people eating their tacos, like barely paying attention. Yeah. And this was even before people were on their phones all the time, so people, yeah. some people didn't have those then have smartphones. They're just kind of hanging out, kind of listening. You know? Yeah. So he goes, you should go check that out, and I think you should try it. If you want to try it, that's the type of place you would try, like an open mic. And I go, all right. So I went one day, and I did the thing in my head. Of, it was so bad that I was like, oh, because at that point, when you don't start, this is actually good advice, because if you're thinking of starting comedy, go to an open mic. Because yeah. you don't know that's part of the scene. Yeah. So I saw it, and I go, this is so bad. This is so bad. <laughs> That I could be this bad. I had that <laughs> amount of confidence myself. I went, I could be this bad. I could do whatever. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, two weeks later, I went in. I had uh, Corona and, like, two shots of tequila. Uh -huh. And I went up, and it went well. Because I'd say most people, it goes well for the first time because there's so much there's so much adrenaline mm -hmm. behind it. And if people know it's your first time, they're kind of on board with you, and they, they know how it feels. So I think they're, even if it's subconscious, they're like, they, they want you to yeah. do well. And I did that, and then I was like, th that was the first time I did it, and I haven't stopped. I haven't, st I haven't stopped since until til quarantine. What was the feeling after you got off stage? I, I, I don't even remember. I think I just remember I wasn't like congratulatory. I was like patting myself on the back. I think I was like, I can't believe I did it. I was like, I got, I was very like just like numb. I think I think I was more numb than I did it, and I was like, and I also. I was still very down on myself, so I was like, it must have went really well for me to keep going. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It was like one of those kind of things where I was like. Oh, if I kept going, I remember. I can't remember my mindset, but I think I thought of it as I'll come back here next week, and I'll come back here next week. Mm -hmm. And I think having the show around the corner that I was producing yeah. helped me show up to the mic because I was like, I would go hand out flyers and then go to the mic and do the yeah, mic. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah. And now is your friend Blaine Blair? Is Blaine, he still doing it? Blaine Perry. He does it, but he lives in North Carolina now. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Look at that. Super funny comic. He's also one of the reasons I stayed with it because we just kept running shows together. Mm -hmm. So, really, really funny dude. But then he had a uh, computer job. Then him and his wife moved down to North yeah. Carolina, and they uh, now yeah. I don't think he does it as much. He does it like he's like a hobby guy now. Yeah. Yeah. I um I did the same thing. I went to an open mic. Yeah. And I sat in the back and watched the whole thing and didn't get up. And I remember being like, "This is terrible." Yeah. This is horror. And it was yeah. like a club mic, so it was, oh, right. was real it in, depressing. In New York. New York Comedy Club. Yeah. So before you were it here. was Emilio's. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was yeah. New York Comedy Club. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. before it was it changed hands. What it hands. is now. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just the most depressing thing I'd ever seen. And I yeah. made my boyfriend at the time come and watch with me. And then he told me he was like, "I think you're." I asked him if he thought it was funny, and he said, "I think you're entertaining, not necessarily funny." Wow. Yeah. And so I didn't do it for like a year after that because I was okay. Like, that that'll get you. And then we broke up, and I and then I started, then you started doing, doing it. it. Yeah. But you were already in the city. I was already in the city, yeah. But so you I've moved from upstate, or where were you again? I was in... Whoa, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> oh, it's a butterfly. It's a butterfly. It's a fucking, it looked like a bee. It was like a yellow <laughs> butterfly. You really... I'd be so bad. I thought you pulled a muscle. I'd be so... Oh, my God, you really kicked I it. I gave myself a cramp from <laughs> fighting a butterfly. 
I would do so <laughs> bad in, in wilderness. I would I would die. And it looks like you've lived there for years. I know. <laughs> I look like I have a, I have a cabin somewhere. <laughs> Isn't that? Cr- I just fucking freaked out over a butterfly. <laughs> and this is now. This is this, now this is on forever. Oh my god, that made my day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. No coordination. <laughs> <laughs> the butterfly. <laughs> Sorry. The, can you see how it wasn't athletic in high school? <laughs> no, you did a kickflip or whatever. I did a heel flip. Yeah, I did a uh, skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> One heel flip. Oh, my and God. I, I did it because I was running from a butterfly. That's why yeah. I did the heel flip. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I could do this. Yeah, I did a heel flip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That, oh. Fantastic! So I forgot you, what we were talking about. Yeah, you <laughs> came from. I asked you. You came from the state, right? Oh, I I um, not, not I came to New York for grad school. I'm originally from California. California, that's right. Yes. Okay. And yeah. then I came for grad school, and then I didn't start comedy for like four years after that. Okay. I also started late. I started like 26. Okay. Yeah. And what did you go to uh, school for? I went for fine art. Okay. So it was bad. I have a master's degree that I'll never pay off. <laughs> yeah, it's very. It's uh, whew, not great. But that's like my buddy, it got me my to New York. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. it's how it's meant to be. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah, man, it's like it's like one of those things where um, you don't your mo- your you does change you. It definitely does change you. Mm-hmm. It changes because it becomes your world. Yeah. Uh, I think it j- it probably changes your worldview in some way. It also like changes your relationships. It changes like every aspect of your life yeah. pretty much. And I'm definitely a way different person than I was at 28 than I am now. I would say. Yeah. How On certain old- things, no, but yeah. You know. How old were you when you got Letterman? Um, thirty-three. Wow. No, no, no. Uh, Let's see. So that was I did. It in th- I think I did two thousand thirteen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what was I? Uh, that would be seven years ago, right? Yeah. So yeah, so I was, no, thirty. Uh, uh, I'm uh, thirty-four. No, no. Why can't I do math <laughs> right now? This is, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm forty-two it's now, okay. <laughs> minus seven years, so uh, thirty-five. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give you a little fun fact. That you probably uh, take it or leave it. But I remember um, it was the last episode of Letterman airing. And The Stand did a show where they had people do sets. Um, I do remember that. And I remember seeing you. And I, I think I had just, like, maybe a week into comedy. Maybe oh, a month oh into comedy. I just started. I had just started. Wow. And I saw you and I was like, he is fantastic. <laughs> he is my favorite. I love him so much. I don't remember anyone else on the show. I just remember you. Really? Yes. That's so nice of you to say you, that. Oh, and I, Joe List was on it too. Do you, know, you remember Joe List? I, I don't remember his jokes, but yeah. I just remember being like awestruck by you. Really? Yeah, because you oh were my so God. fast and quick. And I was like, I see, that's that's <laughs> me. You know, I was like, I could be. Uh, we are very similar. We're very similar. We're very yes. energetic. Yes. And I was yeah. like, see, okay, all right. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I think we're, we're very aware, uh, energetic, but aware yes. of being energetic. We're yes. not energetic. We're, tr- we're, I think we're energetic with trying to get the best out of us. Of mm-hmm. who, who we are. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Like, of how we are on stage. Yeah. I think we're constantly thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Or I am. I, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I remember I was like, Sean Donnelly, my number one. <laughs> I loved you. That's so nice of you. Yeah. So I, Well, I, you know I, how much I love you. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, this is, how do you feel? Do you, did I, I we feel good. anything? No, I, I think I told a couple drunk stories. Those worked, yeah, right? Yeah, they were great. Yeah. They were touched uh, people. I'm always, I'm always glad to see you. <laughs> yes, what a delight. And it was a very fun conversation. Yeah, we had a good time. Uh, and I got a free kombucha. You got it. a free kombucha. <laughs> I'll get you another one. How about that? I'll get, I'll get you a follow-up kombucha. Oh, yeah. What are you, Oprah? There's one in your chair right now. <laughs> But does kombucha is that give, is it energy? It gives you energy. It gives you energy. It also helps your um, stomach. Gut. Yeah. See, I think I might need it. I think you should. Yeah, I think yeah, it's very yeah. good, and I also like the taste. So uh, there you go. And I gotta it check fills it out. you up. Yeah. yeah. So they have different types of kombucha, right? Yes. Yes. This one's very good. Um, yeah. The ginger is delightful. You, are you a really healthy person? Not any. No. No. I, or I've always been healthy because I played so many sports that I just kind of ate whatever I wanted because I worked out so much. Yeah. And now, and I know how to lose weight. It's just I don't have the discipline to do it. Yeah, when you play so sports, I'm doing you it now. know your body better, I think. Yeah. Like, the, what do they call that? Not physiology. It's um, not reflex. It's like what do you know, the study of the, of the, of the how the body Kinesiology? Works. Kinesiology. Yeah. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, um, for sure. 
I uh, yeah. So like I I know what to do to lose weight and how my body works to lose weight. Yeah. And I just don't do it because I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to do. Yeah. Maybe I should ask you questions about it. I mean, feel free. Yeah. yeah um, be great. I used to be a trainer. I used to train. Oh, were you really? People to yeah. Oh, then I will ask you. Sure. Oh, let me ask you this before. You, then this would be good, be good for you. Okay, the, sure. Because yeah. my weird weirdo not athletic logic br- like idiot brain mm-hmm. thinks that okay so you, my body type is like what would you call this this is like what do they, they have different names for it, right but it's like stocky body type right burly like burly yeah. yeah now i don't want to i want to be a, i want to be leaner than i am uh-huh. you know what i'm saying so when it comes to because people are like oh you should work out while you're while you're dieting and stuff. Mm-hmm. we talked about i'm doing intermittent fasting now yeah doesn't it make more sense to lose some of the weight first and then start if i don't want to be thick if i don't want to be like mm-hmm. like the stocky how i am should, wouldn't it make more sense to lose stuff first and then go into because it just turns into muscle well and I'm keeping that same shape right it you will lose weight faster um if you work out as well but not high intensity i would say just either go for a walk or do yeah. the elliptical something low intense but cardio you know okay, just so, so cardio like works if you went for yeah. an hour long walk every day while you're doing this intermittent intermittent yeah, fasting, ki- killing it you'll be you'll lose like two pounds a week yeah oh wow okay cool maybe yeah. I'll, I'll do that and well, then I, I was doing the walk over to green point the walk back yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I, I so if you going. just do the an hour long walking like um that's yeah. basically three miles yeah three that'd mi- be walking right. three miles that will um just and especially if you do it like three o'clock so you'll sweat um, yeah so it'll be like and it's also almost like a detox See, i didn't know that part three o'clock's a good idea yeah. Like, yeah you don't want to go too hot because then you'll um you'll lose a lot of electrolytes if it's too hot and that's easy to do it's like just walk in and then mm-hmm. you get to the point just to drag a drop I dropped this baby fat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah the, the I, mean, <laughs> I think you look great. You've already looked like you've lost oh, a good you. amount of weight. Thank you. Um, you look fantastic. But yeah, if you want to lose that faster, and then you would start bulking up or you know doing the weightlifting and stuff like that. But cardio is the best way okay. to lose weight. That's what I'll do then. I'll do the walk. Yeah. Yeah. S- thank well, you so much. You know, we're ending with a fun fact. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. Come back in three months. We'll see how Sean's doing. Oh no, another butterfly. <laughs> another okay. <laughs> The green fly. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Well, we're gonna go before he <laughs> kills himself. Can I just can I plug one thing? Oh please! Oh my god! I have a radio show on Sirius. It's called uh, um, Celebrate, and I also have a UFO podcast called Skylight. Oh, that's so fun! Yes. Oh great! So please check it out. You can download it all the places. Yes, do it. And uh, it's on Sirius Celebrate, right? Yes, every Friday. You've done it? Yes, I've done it. Yes, it's a fun, fun show. Mm-hmm. It's every Wednesday at 4 p.m. on Channel 99, Raw Dog 99. Raw Dog. Which I always feel weird saying. No, I feel say like a bro it. saying Raw yeah, Dog. Yeah, Raw Dog. This odd <laughs> duck is Raw Dog in it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Or, oh my God. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Literally, I'm so used to being on other people's <laughs> podcasts, or like you being the leader, that I'm like, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me on your <laughs> thank podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> 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 a good time.